disaster at Starbase, SpaceX's Starship 36 explodes in a massive fireball, causing severe damage to the launch site infrastructure. With the test stand in ruins and debris scattered across the facility, Starship's 2025 launch hopes have been thrown into chaos. But SpaceX isn't standing still. In this video, we break down the aftermath of the explosion, the extent of the damage, and SpaceX's urgent recovery plan that could bring Starship back to flight sooner than expected. Its explosion tearing through Massey and halting progress in an instant. Images of the aftermath now emerge, offering a clearer view of the damage in the challenge. Ahead. But the question is no longer just what wrong, it is how SpaceX moves forward, what is the state of Massey and what must be done to recover and resume testing. Some are even beginning to ask, could this mean no more Starship launches in 2025? Just how serious is the fallout from the loss of Ship 36? Is it truly possible that we might not see another launch this year? And most importantly, can SpaceX recover and return to flight in time? SpaceX has just suffered a major blow on its path to the next Starship launch in the true. Extent of the damage is now only coming into focus. The incident occurred during a six-engine static fire test involving Ship 36 at the Massey test facility. What was expected to be a routine pre-flight check turned into a catastrophic explosion that completely destroyed the vehicle and may have severely damaged the surrounding test. Infrastructure In one of the latest video captures, the damage is clearly visible. All signs indicate that the structure is beyond repair and will need to be entirely replaced. As beside it, the ship QD system also appears heavily exposed and stripped down, suggesting that it too may require major refurbishment or complete replacement. Moving outwards from the stand, additional damage becomes evident. A scorched horizontal tank can be seen at the far end near the test structure. Now SpaceX has faced setbacks before, from hard landings to in-flight anomalies, none have matched to this moment in terms of shock and scope. This was not just a failed ignition, it was a violent eruption that engulfed the test. Sight in flames, sending a fireball into the night sky and igniting immediate concerns. For the Starship schedule ahead. The explosion happened just after 11 p.m. Central, leading up to the blast, observers noticed. Unusual vending patterns, possibly pointing to feeling or pressurization issues. Then without warning, Ship 36 exploded and the resulting blaze burned for several minutes. Emergency teams were dispatched quickly to contain the fire and secure the area. Fortunately, there is no evidence of secondary explosions and the nearby main fuel tanks seem to have remained intact. Debris is still scattered throughout the test site. One particularly large piece of wreckage is noticeable on the far side of the test stand, near the facility's drainage channel. This object could very well be a fragment from Ship 36 itself. In addition, the drainage system in that area shows signs of a recent fire alongside the accumulated debris. While it is unclear whether this was caused directly by the explosion or by routine testing residue over time, the system will clearly require a thorough cleaning. The effects of the blast also appear to have reached several adjacent systems. SpaceX has since confirmed the anomaly, noting that no one was injured and that there were no hazards beyond the site. Local officials were also notified and remain in coordination with SpaceX personnel. However, the company has yet to release a cause for the failure. Current speculation suggests a possible methane or oxygen leak that may have ignited due to heat, pressure, or a faulty connection. Given the volatile nature of Starship's propellants, even a small flaw in a valve or seal can trigger catastrophic results. That said, these zones are farther from the explosion site and seem to have sustained only minor damage. On the opposite side of the facility, which houses a large number of horizontal fuel tanks, the systems appear to have been spared entirely and remain in good condition. Cleanup operations have already begun. While the damage is substantial, SpaceX is clearly moving quickly to assess, clean, and begin the process of rebuilding the Massey test site. The next phase in the aftermath of the Ship 36 incident will focus on cleanup, refurbishment, and finding workable solutions to resume operations. However, one major question now looms, what will SpaceX do about the critical systems that 
were damaged or destroyed during the explosion? Fortunately, SpaceX has considerable experience laying down such infrastructure, and based on previous repair timelines, this could potentially be completed within a few weeks if prioritized. It is obvious from recent imagery that the stand is beyond repair and will need to be replaced entirely. The new stand does not need to replicate the exact design of the previous one, but it must integrate with the rest of the test system and support the same operational requirements. As for the ship QD system, there are rumors that SpaceX maintains at least one backup. Should SpaceX simply rebuild the damaged infrastructure to support the current Starship versions? Or should it take this opportunity to begin transitioning to the newer version known as Starship V3? At first glance, rebuilding the old test system seems logical. It'd allow SpaceX to continue testing and launching the remaining V2 prototypes, which include Booster 15, 16, and 17, along with Ship 37, 38. These vehicles are still viable and waiting for their turn in the launch queue. Rebuilding the test infrastructure for these existing vehicles would seem to offer the quickest path back to flight. The destruction of Ship 36 is a major blow to the flight timeline, as 36 had been assigned to carry out the highly anticipated Flight 10. With it now lost, SpaceX must pivot quickly, most likely turning to Ship 37 as a replacement. But as 37 has yet to complete critical tests, and with massy damage, it is unclear when full-scale testing can resume. But that solution may only be a temporary fix. When we take a closer look at the long-term strategy, several issues emerge. The number of remaining V2 prototypes is small. Rebuilding an entire test system for just a few remaining flights may not be the most efficient use of resources. That makes backups limited, and using the one remaining unit could jeopardize progress in Mega Bay 2 or other facilities. This brings us to a bold but promising option. Building a brand new test infrastructure specifically tailored to support Starship V3. Yes, making this shift would mean skipping the few remaining V2 vehicles, which could be seen as wasteful. But in return, SpaceX would gain a robust system designed to support the next chapter of Starship development. Starship V3 promises a majorly forward. This version includes a wide range of improvements across systems. The upgraded Raptor 3 engines, for example, are expected to offer significantly higher thrust while being simpler and more reliable. These changes aim to increase performance, enhance safety, and reduce complexity across the board. Starship V3 will also be larger and more capable, making it a more suitable platform for critical missions such as in-space refueling, lunar landings, and even crewed Mars missions. And finally, they must prepare and qualify an entirely new vehicle for flight. That means more tanking tests, engine verifications, and another static fire all before even thinking about launch. This setback comes just days after the FAA officially listed June 29th and the 30th as target windows for Flight 10. A launch on either of those dates would have broken SpaceX's record for the fastest turnaround between Starship missions, clocking in at just 33 or 34 days since Flight 9. That milestone now appears out of reach. Booster 16 is still progressing on schedule, its hot station ring has been installed, and flight. Hardware preparations are nearly complete. But without a validated ship to pair it with, it too must wait. In the short term, this incident will almost certainly cause a delay of at least one to two months, possibly longer. That depends on how fast the Massey site can be brought back online and how quickly Ship 37 can be verified for flight. In the worst-case scenario, if deeper issues emerge or repairs take longer than expected, the next Starship launch could be pushed into late 2025. Still, if any company can turn a failure into progress, it is SpaceX. Time and again, they have proven their ability to adapt, iterate, and return stronger. They learn quickly from setbacks and the rapid pace of development in the Starship. Program has always reflected a willingness to embrace risk in pursuit of breakthrough capabilities. So while the road ahead has become more uncertain, it is far too early to count Starship out. SpaceX has overcome greater challenges before and there is every reason to believe they 
will do so again. What do you think, can SpaceX recover in time to launch Starship again this year? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. If you found this breakdown helpful, smash that like button, subscribe for more real-time Starship updates, and hit the bell so you never miss the next big moment from Starbase. The future of spaceflight is unfolding fast, and we're covering every second of it. Let us know in the comments. And also, reply keep going to show your support and don't forget to like the video and subscribe. So you never miss out on a moment of Starship's bold journey to the stars. And that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. And that's all for today's update. If you enjoyed watching and found it useful, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the like button. And if you want to support our channel and if you want to be up to date, you can become an exclusive member. So click on our perks through the link in the description below. Thanks to watching and see you next time.